In 2013, Steve and Jilly Snaith set out with their two young daughters, Alicia and Lucy, to see if they could drive around the world. Last August, after four years on the road, they arrived back, having successfully accomplished their mission. Their journey covered 110,000 miles and took their family to all seven continents and over 50 countries. Please give a very warm welcome to Steve and Jilly Snaith. We fell in love in Zaire in a mud puddle in 1995. Not exactly what you call a typical holiday romance. But if you can love each other smelling as badly as we did, then it was a good sign for the future. And since that day, we dreamt and dreamt of doing a big trip on our own. And we talked about it and talked about it and planned it for 18 years. <laughs> there was just never a good time to go. What about now? I need to finish my course at university. How about now? I'm being offered an opportunity to go and work abroad. How about now? I'm pregnant. How about now? I'm being given a promotion at work, and so it continues. Well, if we're going to do it, we need to do it soon. But what about the kids? I think we're going to need a bigger vehicle. How about we drive a truck around the world? Can you drive a truck? I can learn. <laughs> and it took him three goes to pass this test. <laughs> if the truck breaks down, can you fix it? Me? I'm an accountant. I can't fix anything. <laughs> but at least you, the schooling will be sorted because you're a teacher. Yeah, but I'm a secondary biology teacher and our kids are four and eight. But if we don't go now, we'll never know whether it's possible to drive a truck around the world with two children in tow. And now we do. Last year, as we rolled off the ferry in Portsmouth, we'd done it. We spent four years driving around the world. Our journey had covered 110,000 miles, took us through 58 countries, and took us to all oh. seven continents. And what an incredible trip it was. Our truck camper enabled us to really get away from it. When fully stopped, we'd go for 10 days at a row, in a row, um, and enabling us to really get away and off the grid, from the wilds of Patagonia to the outback Australia, from the mighty Pamirs in Tajikistan to the Sala de Uni in Bolivia. We could sit there under the stars, around the campfire, us feeling so small with the world feeling so big. And we had some amazing experiences, like watching a jaguar hunt and kill a caiman, just like in planet Earth in the Pantanal, to sleeping in a bivy bag on the ice in Antarctica, to having a tiger mock charges in India, to circling the Barkor Temple with the pilgrims in Lhasa. The world just has so much to see and so many wonderful people in it. But a trip like this is not without its challenges. Uh, shipping a vehicle across oceans was a logistical nightmare, and the vehicle permits and the visas in Asia were difficult. And driving in India is like nothing else on this planet. We were constantly worried that we were going to hit someone. Now, back in the UK, even the worst traffic jam on the M25 is a breeze compared with driving through a normal Indian town. But wherever we were, whatever we did, the kids would just roll with it. They were great. Mind you, in Cambodia, it was us that were hit when a truck drove into the back of us. And in South Africa, we nearly lost everything when we had to abandon the truck in a flash flood. And whilst most nights were memorable for being, bizarre, for being beautiful, we also had a number of bizarre nights. Like when we were woken in the middle of the night by Turkish plainclothes policemen with machine guns who wanted to escort us off the mountain because they thought we were terrorists. But while I was being interviewed at the police station by the local English teacher who'd been summoned from his bed, Jilly and the girls were being fed tea and biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, our mechanical skills didn't get much better. But changing a, a wheel that weighs 125 kilos is pretty challenging when there's two of us. But wherever we were, the kids were brilliant. And the children settled into the trip really easily. Very early in the trip, they would often say after a walk, I want to go home. They didn't mean come back to England, they meant go back to Truckee, as they called our truck. For them, the truck was home. And the world provided the most amazing education for them. What better to learn about the world than by being in it and experiencing it? I have to admit, initially, even as a teacher, I was pretty daunted by the fact. But what better way to learn about Hinduism than in India, 
the, uh, to learn about evolution in the Galapagos or about the Mayans at the bottom of a pyramid in, in, uh, in the bottom of a pyramid in Mexico. They were just brilliant. They could learn about so many different things, game tally charts in Africa and learning about dot paintings from indigenous artists in Australia. There was so much to learn. And children on a trip like this are not a burden or a barrier. In fact, they open many doors and allow you to see the world in a lot of different ways. In parts of India, it was like traveling with two film stars, such was the attention they got. <laughs> when asked what's one of the best parts of the trip, it was traveling as a family and seeing the world together all the time. Mind you, when asked what some of the worst part of the trip is, it's being together as a family <laughs> all the time. <laughs> One thing we learned around the world, that 99% of the people in the world are so good. We were overwhelmed by people's friendliness, helpfulness, and interest in our trip. It was really, really amazing. And the world's not as scary as the media would have you believe. With some common sense and a bit of planning, it's really not a scary place at all. In fact, one of our few regrets was not taking the children through Pakistan. Because of security concerns, Jilly and the girls flew over. Me, it was expendable. I drove the truck through <laughs> Pakistan along the Karakoram Highway, which was just beautiful, and met some amazing people. And what we learned as well, that everyone's journey is completely different. There's no right way or wrong way of doing a trip. There's just your way of doing the trip. We wrote a blog for our friends and family so they could see what we were up to. But towards the end of the trip in Turkey, Alicia, in very much in a pre-teen moment, rolled her eyes and went, Oh, my life is so boring. <laughs> At which point, we realized that maybe they really didn't understand how amazing their childhood was. So we, when I got back, we got in touch with the local BBC news channel just to see if they'd be interested in our story. The little clip they made for, about us has been viewed 4.4 million times. And uh, showing that there's an awful lot of families out there who would love to travel and are really interested. And it's been great for our kids to see what was going on. And there's been all the comments were mostly positive, but, uh, yeah, it was very good that way. And we've got no special skills to do this. We were just travellers who were greedy and wanted to see as much of the world as possible. If you do ask us what got us round, I would say it was just sheer bloody-mindedness. <laughs> Sorry, we're slightly overrun. I have to admit, returning home has been a little hard, mostly for Steve and I. But the girls, they've been great. They've just rolled with it, as they did for the rest of the trip. To them, going to school is an adventure. Driving around the world, well, that's just normal. <laughs> so, yeah, Lucy, what did you particularly enjoy about the trip? Seeing all the animals, such as the penguins in Antarctica and the lions in the Okavana Delta, not in the zoo. Right. And, and is it easy driving around the world? Any tips for anyone else? Yes, just go. Thank you. <laughs>